Hey there friends, Darren here, and I've got another tutorial for you today. But before we do that, you know, welcome to 2019. I am super excited for this year, and I hope it's going to be a great one for you. I know I have a lot of things planned in my own life, but today we are coming back with another app design challenge. And in this series, what I have done is I've gone online, looked for some of the most beautiful app screens that I could find and I wanted to see how Thunkable would stack up to these beautiful apps. Would I be able to create a beautiful app inside of Thunkable? So that's what we're testing today. I've got a, another app for you. So let's go ahead and jump onto my screen and we can see how Thunkable stacks up. Alrighty, so here is the app screen that we are going to try to make in Thunkable. I apologize for the clarity or the quality of this image. Again, I pulled it offline. But what I like about this app screen is one, the coloring. Two, I really like the input fields because you know you have the clear background but also the white underline. And then down at the bottom, I really like the, the buttons, the two button options. I think it kind of um, gives a nice visual appeal to the user. So to kick us off, before we actually go into Thunkable, I need two things. So one is the logo that is used on the screen, and then two is the gradient background that is the background of the screen. And since the focus of this tutorial is on actually making the app in Thunkable, we're going to go through creating the assets of the icon and the gradient background super fast. So let's jump into it. So I found out that the logo or the app was tied to a website called rconnection.com. So I go to that website and pull down the icon from there. However, the colors of the current website and the image icon screen that we are trying to make do not match anymore. So I needed to recolor the icon. So inside of my image editor, I make the icon white and then divide it into four different pieces for each corner so that I can recolor later. To determine what colors I need to recolor to, I need to go ahead and make my gradient background. So inside of Canva, I grab a gradient background and then determine the colors that are in that gradient. Now that I have the colors for my app, I can actually recolor the different pieces of the icon. So I found a tool on minitools.org. It's called the Image Colorize Filter where I can actually recolor these white pieces of the icon logo. After they are recolored, I'll go ahead and repiece the icon pieces together inside of Canva. And then now that I have the icon and the gradient in Canva, I can export both of those, remove anything that I don't need anymore. And then now I have the two assets that I need to create this app in Thunkable. Alrighty, take a big breath with me. All right, so now we can settle down into the actual tutorial inside of Thunkable. So we're going to start out with a new app, a blank screen. And on that screen, we'll go ahead and set the background picture to the gradient background that we created from Canva. And then I'm going to choose the resize mode of center and then choose the screen's justification to be spaced around so that everything that I add in the screen is going to be evenly spaced throughout. So the screen itself is gonna have uh, three sections, or I'm actually gonna add three columns. The top column we'll call the logo column. The middle column I'll call the login column. And then the final column, that'll be our action column where the buttons are gonna go. So we can start off with the first column. This is where we're going to add the logo and that little label that goes under it. So for this first column, we'll set the height to 25%, and then within the column, we're going to add a image and a label. For the image, we are going to set the image itself to the logo that uh, we created in Canva, and then we'll set the height of that image to 110 absolute pixels. The width will set to fit contents, and then the resize mode will set to contain. And what that does is make sure that the entire logo is shown in the container that we put it in. So for the label, we're going to edit quite a few things here. We'll go ahead and set the text to find and meet people around you to find love. And then we'll set the font size to 12, the color to white, the height to fit contents, and then the width to 55%. And then for this label, we'll actually jump into a few of the advanced settings just to get the spacing and everything perfect. So under advanced, we'll adjust the text style 
and then the text align. So under the text style bucket, adjust text align to center. This will center our text. And then we're gonna add some spacing or some margin to the top. This will separate it from the image or the icon. And then finally in the positioning section, we're going to align items to center. And with that, the logo column is looking pretty good. So we can move on to the next section where we'll have the uh, user input fields, the login column. For this column, we'll set the height to 35% and then again adjust the justification to space around so that everything inside is nice and spaced out. Inside of this column we're going to add a single label and then three text input fields. So we'll have one label and then three inputs. For the label we'll set the text to create your login and then set the font size of that label to 20, the color to white, and then make sure that both the height and the width are set to fit contents. For the first text input field this is where we'll have the user type in their name we'll go ahead and set the default uh, text to Jamie Norwick the height to fit contents the width to 80% and then under advanced we have quite a few things to change here just to make sure that the input field looks really nice so under the text style bucket we'll set the color of the text to white we'll set the font size to 16 then in the spacing bucket of the advanced section We'll give the input field some padding on the top and the bottom of 2%. And then finally for styling, we want to give we wanted to give the input field that bottom under light white line. So in styling, we're going to adjust the border width bottom to one. That will give it a thickness of one. And then we'll also adjust the border bottom color to white. That'll make the bottom border of the input field to white. Now for the last two input fields in this column, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did for the first input, except instead of actually typing in the text, we're only going to adjust the hint of the field. So this provides the user with a hint of what they should be typing. So we'll type password for the first one and then re-enter password for the next one. And then everything else will remain exactly the same as what we did before for the first input item. Alrighty, so two column sections down and one to go. In this last column section, we'll be adding the action buttons. So where the user can actually act and do something inside of the app. So for this last column, we'll go ahead and adjust the height to 20% and set justification to space around. Inside of the column, we're gonna have two separate rows. The first one is gonna be where the user can opt in to agree to the terms and conditions. And then the second row will be where the user can cancel or save their input. Instead of adding a checkbox, like in the actual screenshot, we're going to use a switch since that's what Thunkable has. And the only thing that we will adjust on the switch is we'll change the on tint color to green. Two other items to add to that first row is one, a column, and then two or the third item, a label. Now the column, all we're using the column for is spacing. So we'll set the width to 7%. This will add some space between the switch and the label. And then for the label, this is where we'll actually have the text agree to terms and conditions. We'll set the color of this label to white and then make sure that the height and the width are set to fit contents. All right, and in this last row, we're going to add three things, a button, a column and another button. For the first button, we'll set the text to cancel, all caps, the text color to white, the background color to transparent, the font size to 16, and then confirm that height and width are set to fit contents. Now the column again is acting as a spacer for us to spread out the buttons. So we're just gonna set the width to 10%. And then the final button is going to say save, We'll set the text color to the background color that we're using. I wrote this down earlier. The background color to white, the font size to 16. And then for this button, we're going to use some absolute pixel values. So we use height is 50 and then width is 125. And then the final thing to do on this button is to give it that nice curved edge. So we'll adjust the corner radius to 30. And overall, this is looking really good so far. But before we actually go and look at this inside of the app, I want to adjust the spacing just a hair. So on the screen, 
surrounding the three columns, I'm going to add a row at the very top and the row at the very bottom. And I'm going to set the height of each of these rows to 1%. So using the screen's justification of space around, this is just going to space out the top and the bottom a little bit more to give us a more more appealing app screen. All right, and now that we have that, let's take a look at what this looks like inside of the app. So if you remember, this is what we were trying to make inside of Thunkable. This is what I grabbed offline for this design challenge. And here is what we were actually able to make inside of Thunkable. So what do you think? How did it turn out inside of Thunkable? Be sure to let me know in the comments below which one you like better and if there's anything I could have done to make my version of the app screen look better. And hey, if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials coming to you. And with that, I'll say I hope you have a great rest of your day and happy coding.